Two weeks ago I uploaded my Road to 1 million gold video. If you haven't watched it already, a link will be in the description. In the comments of that video, there were a few skeptical people questioning the legitimacy of the gold, saying things like, oh it's not possible to make a 1 level 7 gem a week, or you cannot farm that many mats a day, also calling me an RM tier, despite me streaming the whole challenge live on Twitch every day. So in this video, I will show you everything I was doing to min max gold gain. I encourage you to watch the whole video, as there are things that not many people actually knew about. Big disclaimer. I play on EU central region and the prices will be different on other regions, so certain things might get you more or less gold depending where you play. Let's start with the non-RNG most stable source of weekly gold, which are raids. I have 6 gold making characters that are all 1460 plus, which means I can do Valtan and Vika's hard mode. When buying a box you have 3 options. If you want to max material gain you buy every box. If you want balance between gold and materials then only buy the last box. And for maximum gold gain you don't buy any box. Which is what I will use for the sake of this video. Valtan Hard and Vika's Hard give you 4500 gold each which is 9000 gold per character. Multiply that by 6 characters it makes 54000 gold. Three of my characters are 1475 plus, which means before Cuckoo release they were able to make 2700 gold each from Argos, but after Cuckoo release I duo bus Argos on those three characters for that extra 2700 gold per character. So all six characters also make 16200 gold from Argos. After you make your relic set level 2, you can stop buying Cuckoo boxes which on my 3 1475 plus characters would add up 4500 gold per character which is 13500 gold overall. When we add everything up, raids will net you 83700 gold per week. Another stable gold income is selling tradable materials. Material gain depends on how many characters you have and how much you play daily. For the sake of the video, I will only calculate the daily material intake from the 6 characters. Unrested highest 2 chaos dungeons and 2 guardian raids get you around 970 guardian stones, 350 destruction stones and 15 great honor leap stones. Multiplying this by 6 characters you can make around 5800 guardian stones, 2100 destruction stones and 90 great honor leap stones per day then multiply that by 7 days and you get around 40600 guardian stones 14,700 destruction stones and 630 great honor leap stones each week just from chaos dungeons and guardian raids. But of course, those aren't the only weekly materials you can get. Firstly, challenge guardian raids are only doable on one character each week and it gives you tradable 2,700 guardian stones, 920 destruction stones and 45 great honor leap stones. Next two things will depend on how many tier 3 characters you have which in my case it's 9, so I will calculate it for those 9 characters. Each character earns their own bloodstones from donating to guild and supporting research. At the guild merchant you can buy tradable 580 guardian stones and 240 destruction stones on each character once a week. And multiplying that by 9 characters I have, it gives 5220 guardian stones and 2160 destruction stones. To get the most valuable items from the guild merchant you need around 9000 bloodstones each week and you can get a lot of them from weekly guild quests in cube and boss rush and killing Rudrik solo in raid match gvg. And the last thing is pirate coins merchant, a ship located outside every harbor will get you tradable 900 guardian stones and 300 destruction stones per character. The cost is 16200 pirate coins per character. Multiplying that by 9 characters gets you 8100 guardian stones and 2700 destruction stones for a cost of 145,800 pirate coins each week. And now putting all of these materials with all the daily materials gets you 56,620 guardian stones, 20,480 destruction stones and 675 great honor leap stones. Selling all guardian stones at the price of 3 gold per 10 gets you around 16,500 gold. Selling destruction stones at the price of 13 gold per 10 gets you around 26,000 gold. And selling great honor leap stones at the price of 40 gold per 1 
gets you around 27,000 gold. And putting everything together is around 69,500 gold per week from selling materials. Selling gems is good if you need gold, but you can also use them on your main on your alts. In case you don't need it, you can sell them and for the sake of this video, I will calculate the absolute max you can get from selling these gems. Getting gems can be somewhat RNG as you never get the same amount of them. One boss rush run always gets you 2 level 4 gems and 1 level 3 gem after combining everything. Main source of boss rush tickets is Chaos Dungeon. And in case you didn't already know, you have a 100% guarantee to get at least 1 boss rush ticket and 1 cube ticket every 7 days from the last day you got one. On average, if you have a lot of characters, in my case 9, you will get 2nd boss rush ticket within those 7 days and out of 9 characters, on average, I get 2nd boss rush ticket on 4 of them, making the total of 13 boss rush tickets from Chaos Dungeons. Bloodstone Guild Merchant sells 3 Punica chests that have a 33% chance to drop 1 boss rush ticket and opening these 3 chests on 9 characters gets me on average around 5 boss rush tickets, making the total of 18 boss rush tickets each week. Some weeks I get more, some weeks I get less, but around 17 to 18 boss rush tickets each week has been the usual average for me. Following the 2 level 4 gems and 1 level 3 gems you get from 1 boss rush ticket, gets you 18 level 3 gems and 36 level 4 gems. I will do the final gem combining after I add up all of the gems you can gain. 2 Chaos Dungeon runs on 6 characters gets you an average of 1 level 3 gem and 2 level 2 gems. Medea and Slime Island capture event gets you 1 level 5 gem and 1 level 3 gems either for winning or losing on a rank 1 event. Thunderwings drop 2 level 2 gems and 1 level 1 gem and appears 3 times a week. On average, from Chaos Gate, I get 3 purple maps each week, either from drops or combining blue maps into purple and each purple map drops 2 level 3 gems and 2 level 1 gems after combining. After all of this, you will have 9 level 1 gems, 18 level 2 gems, 32 level 3 gems, 36 level 4 gems and 2 level 5 gems. Combining all of this gets you 2 level 7 gems and 1 level 4 gem. In my opinion it is only worth selling level 6 and above gems and selling 2 level 7 gems for the minimum price of 13,000 per one gets you additional 26,000 gold each week from selling gems. These were the 3 stable and minimum RNG ways to make gold each week. I will mention few heavy RNG ways that won't be added into the final calculation as they are very RNG. Any valuable accessories that you can sell for 1000 gold plus, any legendary engraving books that you get from drops, auction houses, cube or any other random lucky way you can get one. Don't dismantle tripod gear and check for level 4 tripods that could be valuable. These can sell for massive amounts of gold if you hit at least 2 valuable level 4 tripods. Every 2 days you get life energy filled up so you can get additional gold from gathering and crafting either fusion material or splendid elemental HP potions or simply start investing into fish as the price should go up due to new fusion materials being available to craft and sell with Brelshaza release. For the final calculation when we add 83,700 gold from raids plus 69,500 gold from selling materials plus 26,000 gold from gems gets you 179,200 gold each week. This does not include any heavy RNG ways to make gold which with a lucky class engraving or an average or multiple below average priced accessories can get you well over 200,000 gold each week. Or you can simply bust Argos, Valtan and Vikas on every character and that will make you even more gold for no RNG. During my 1 million gold challenge I used all of these to absolutely min-max gold gain. But nowadays I play mostly on res bonus and I don't really sell my materials anymore. While I keep and combine all the gems to eventually get to level 10 for my main character. I haven't done any bussing other than Argos and I'm focusing on honing my alts. Let me know in the comments if there are any other ways I didn't mention that can make you a lot of gold. Hopefully this helps you understand how to efficiently make gold and it removes all the skepticism from my 1 million gold challenge. 
Thank you for watching, stay safe and as always, I'll see you in the next one.